keynote address on climate change, environmental health, and the challenges to the policy. Thank you very much. I wanted uh, uh, particularly to hear uh, what Afia has to say. She's a real uh, grassroots champion of climate change, and I appreciate you having her and myself and, and, and putting uh, these issues on the map. Uh, I won't be long because I know there are better speakers than me uh, lined up with you. Uh, first of all, I want to say, look, um, the WHO has said internationally that health issues are the most impacted by climate change. And it's, this is something that is not uh, really seen as front and center in the discourse on climate change, but really the most uh, shocking statistics and the ones that should shake us out of the normal kind of lassitude we have in terms of climate action or the the you know race towards inaction as i call it is uh, uh is what the who has said so i really appreciate that they've gone ahead and said that you know it is one of the world's greatest health challenges and it is linked entirely to climate change now having said that coming into pakistan uh we've been making this argument as afia knows and she's been with us in all the key forums and inshallah will be everywhere. We we want to look uh, look at a situation where Pakistan is saying and is rightly so saying that you know we are a very low emitter of greenhouse gases, which is a fact. And so yes, uh, the whole context of climate justice and um, how we end up uh, paying the price for other people's consumerism and bad habits and fossil fuel addictions. Uh, poses a threat for us. So we do pay that price. But having said that, you know, this is November. And November in Pakistan is very, very focused on uh, everybody's mind should and does focus on the devastating consequences of air pollution, which are locally caused. And 80% of it is locally caused. I, and let's not pretend otherwise, okay? Because we have to take responsibility for it. Everything is not about narrative. A lot of it is about actions, which is why I think we need to appreciate three, four things. One is that uh, health impacts are most direct. You can certainly start ingesting toxic water and get diarrhea because the uh, water is one of the most polluted things in Pakistan, whether it's arsenic or whether it's the groundwater we're looking at, but even uh, surface water that we, you know, consume a lot of it comes from the indus river as do many of our um, of what we ingest uh, and so from the ocean and and the indus river is the fourth most polluted uh, uh, you know water body in the world that's something we need to look, look at and we are entirely responsible for but moving on to uh, you know uh, air pollution which is on my mind always every november and even before that um, look three things one is that it is generated locally mostly and this this is just the bumper sticker on that secondly it's become a serial killer for pakistan okay it's become a serial killer in 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 the sense that the amount of deaths that you looking at has been very exponential it reduces life expectancy across pakistan by up to 2.7 years which is a very big number and now we have a situation where, um, you know, PMT 2.5, the concentration in Lahore, which is how we measure it, is so high that it has gone beyond all the charts. Okay, now we can say that it is uh, Lahore wise with Delhi most of the time for being one of the two top most polluted cities in the world. Now, these are very dubious titles to be uh, debating and, and ranking ourselves on. And I think one of the things we have to recognize is that there are guidelines for air quality, for clean air, and that clean air is a right. You can't be in a situation where children are told not to go to schools. Children are, uh, you know, uh, put in, left put indoors for a whole season because we can't manage our air quality. Uh, uh, older people are hospitalized. I mean, there were numbers like in 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 five hundreds in one day that were hospitalized in Lahore, and I remember seeing it on uh, uh, my social media. Somebody contacted me that I know, and they said, "Well, I'm one of them." 
you know, I'm 60 years old and above and I'm hospitalized because of the air quality. I've lived here all my life. I cannot breathe anymore. So it is fundamental to not just our health, but our uh, but but it places greater limits on our mortality, on our ability to achieve anything, on our society. And it says a great deal about our society as a whole that we know what's wrong, but we are unable to act on it. Now, when I say serial killer, the Global Alliance on Health and Pollution estimates 128,000 Pakistanis dying annually from air pollution-related illnesses. This is a staggering number, and I believe it is understated because a lot more morbidity and mortality rates are hitting uh, uh, the ground in Pakistan. They simply go un uncounted, and that is particularly respiratory infections, lower and, you know, particularly lower respiratory and indoor air pollution, which causes at least 55,000 deaths annually. Uh, again, undervalued, undercounted. So these statistics really are a wake-up call and they make Pakistan, uh, air pollution, air quality in Pakistan uh, a, a, a serial killer, in my view, because it is silent, it is creeping up around you, and it is not being seen, unfortunately, as a cause for urgent action. So you can't start acting in November and saying, now we're suddenly getting rain clouds and we're doing this and we're doing that. It's not going to work. It is not going to work. And it is not fair to start saying that we're going to close schools and close doors. I mean, how many days will you keep people inside? How many days will your motorways be closed? How many days will your airlines be unable to drive? How many accidents will be will be will there be because of poor air quality? And public health should be front and center of clean air actions. Now, clean air actions are, I mean, there are many, okay? And um, the reasons for smog are many in Pakistan. We know all of them. Those are, you know, uh, smoke from brick kilns, and particularly in the Punjab, which is, uh, which which houses many such uh, factories. Uh, then, but bigger than that is uh, vehicular, uh, uh, you know, emissions. Bigger and and equally big are the big big polluters, the heavy hitters like cement, um, tires, coal, plastic. These are the big emitters. And uh, literally, I think it's time to start looking at the carbon monoxide in our lives as a public health emergency. And that is where uh, I think the needle will shift. Um, last year, when I was health minister, I did, uh, I, I was very, I was like, okay, this has to be out. A national clean air policy with consultation from the provinces has to be out well before November, so they can start taking remedial actions. Even in one year, it will not in three months filter down, but air quality is extremely responsive. The good news is air quality is extremely responsive to a reduction in toxins and pollutions and particulate matter, the 2.5 M that we talk about, and it responds very fast. Anthropogenic action, has for centuries defined our experience. But when we actually take action to, to reduce pollutants in the atmosphere, you'd be surprised at how quickly things change. Now, if you remember the COVID year, the, the COVID interregnum, the whole world went through. When airlines had reduced flights dramatically, did you notice that there was an appreciable change in the color of, of, of the skies? Of the, uh, of, of the air we breathe everywhere. There was an appreciation of that. So honestly, it wasn't just us all imagining a utopian scenario where you can dial back uh, many of our mistakes. It is actually quite possible and achievable. And here's what I would recommend for, uh, you know, uh, for, for, for Pakistan immediately. Yes, I know that we need to uh, roll out electric vehicle policies. They cost quite a bit. Uh, they're not easily affordable by the common woman or man. And, and frankly, they're imported. They're not assembled here. And it's very difficult, therefore, to access parts, to get the, the charging on the grid stations that is needed, unless all that kind of ecosystem is laid out. 
that enables easy use and switch over from you know gas guzzlers to petrol guzzlers to this to to electric vehicles to clean energy and the charging stations for it are there and, and the vehicles are made affordable only then will a switch be made you can't just make a policy in paper and say here we have an electric vehicle policy and pakistan should fully make a switch it doesn't work like that we have to create the enabling conditions and so before we get there we get to the fiscal situation with two wheelers we're starting with the two wheelers and three wheelers but before we get there what are the low hanging fruits you have in your policy envelope right what suite of uh, of urgent actions can you take to appreciably start reducing and if you start acting now maybe next year's lahore and karachi will see changes in their uh, air quality by the time winter comes and winter makes us all particularly vulnerable because the particulate matter rises to the surface because of cold air now we already have a framework for improving air quality there is no excuse there's no policy absence okay there is a there wasn't i took it out last year i said it's like the national adaptation plan i feel a derelict in my duties having held this post for even 15 months i have to take it out because this is one of our biggest problems there we go so we have the framework in that yes it's taken out from isnabad but you know what that means is in it to enable the provinces to be real actors and to be stakeholders in this uh, policy creation it went through three tiers of consultation with each province because each province has different uh, a different economic ecosystem and they have different challenges particularly punjab with proximity to uh, indian punjab where they both burn agricultural residue and create for them create for both uh, areas a real new problem uh, particular to to that area